joelaffairsbrief.com. Joel, thank you so much for joining us. You just heard my five-minute breakdown there. Do you agree with that, disagree? What can you augment? What can you say uh, about the situation uh, unfolding there in Oregon? Well, I do agree with you, Alex. I think it's very important to understand the feds are about to make an example of the Bundy Group there uh, in Harney County. And so, uh, as I say, I'm gonna, I wanna suggest, and I think and hopefully that they'll be seeing this, I wanna suggest a way out of this that I think will benefit both sides. Now, I happen to know Ammon Bundy. He's a very fine person. Um, I think it was a misstep to be able to go into an armed uh, occupation of this uh, wild road refuge just because of, just like you said, it's one thing to be defending your own property against an armed intrusion by the BLM. That can get public support. But when you're trying to undo a national wildlife refuge, uh, which is a matter of legislative uh, uh, import and you know needs, and the public expects that to go through Congress, you're not going to win that battle. And now I've seen on BundyRanch.blogspot.com the detailed evidence of all of the injustices the ranchers, not just the Hammonds, had suffered when the wildlife, uh, Fish and Wildlife Service and BLM went to strangle these ranchers, cut off their water supplies, uh, cut off their access to the ranch when roads ran through the wildlife refuge. They have a, a, a long- Setting litany. them up for controlled burns, they let everybody else do. That's right, and didn't prosecute themselves, their own agents for damaging property, but prosecute people when it gets out of control. Worse yet, in the Hammonds case, they uh, they had to, in order to invoke the terrorism statute, they had to rule these accidental burns as arson. And in order to do that, they got a mentally unstable grandson of the Hammonds to, and the, I think this is just the prosecutors going after uh, um, an individual who was only 11 years old at the time, got him to say that the burning of the 2006 fire was done as an arson to cover up for a hunting or hunting deer on federal land. This is important because it's the only one they could pin the charge of arson on. It turns out to be bogus. Uh, not only was the witness, even by the judge's admission, not competent to testify of that five years after the fact, he wasn't mentally competent. The point is it defies all description. I mean, the only thing you need to cover up a hunting uh, piece of poaching on federal property is remove the carcass, which every poacher does. You can't burn a carcass by starting a fire. You can't even burn the entrails. By it's it's a ridiculous fire. for anybody that knows. It's like saying that the Dundies were stealing land when they had grazing rights since the 1870s. They play on the public's ignorance uh, of uh, common law and of state law and federal law. So there are a lot of injustices that have justified the Bundys who have been tracking all of the other ranchers who have suffered at this. And so basically, they made a tactical mistake by saying we want to undo the wildlife refuge. That can't be done. So what I suggest that Ammon does is before any armed confrontation, before they seal off and start a siege, that he take the high ground, take advantage of the fact that the media has already given some fairly favorable press coverage to the fact that there's no crazies running around, they're cleaning up the place, they're taking care of it, they're not uh, ramsacking it. In other words, there's been some positive press coverage, even from the liberal media in Oregon. They had to take advantage of that, say, we're going to stand down voluntarily because, one, we've already got a sufficient amount of positive press for the land, uh, Western lands movement here. And number two, that it's very important to realize that, uh, that ranchers have been and their rights have been violated. And what they need to say is, we want to demand a rancher's bill of rights be created in Congress. This is similar to the pilot's bill of rights when the FAA was running roughshod over pilots and had control of the, of the judicial machinery that prosecuted pilots. And they, they forced, con through Congress, they forced the FAA to set up a, a standard of due process. And I think that's what ranchers need so that water rights cannot be uh, taken away, the grazing rights cannot be diminished arbitrarily by the BLM. If they were to come out with a proposal like this saying, this is what we want, and then stand down, they would have the high ground. People would say, yeah, they're not a bunch of crazies. This would accrue to their benefit. Well, Joel, this is exactly what I said days ago, and, and I'm sure we both independently came up with the same idea because it's just common sense. Exactly. I like the Bundys. They're walking into a trap, and then instantly... I come out Sunday and I say, look out for federal infiltrators. I mean, they're going to show up like flies on you-know-what. 
and be careful about people calling for violence. Look out. The Bundys are good people. I understand the government's in the wrong. They're the ones running around arms seizing things. Under the Declaration of Independence, I get that you could say they're in the right, but this is stepping into a trap in my informed uh, view. I mean, I've shown I'm not stupid either. Uh, it's common sense, really. And then sure enough, Joe Biggs gets there Monday, and prominent people that are running things uh, run up and yell at him, how dare you say we're feds by name and the Bundys are feds. And then he said, we never said that. Alex never said that. They go, well, it doesn't matter. You know, blah. With people in there telling them lies to then cut them off from people that would support them, this is classic that I've seen in 21 years, dealing with militias, dealing with standoffs, being inside standoffs, trying to negotiate an end to them, uh, like the case with the Gray case. And then the feds come in, tell them bull, uh, and then it comes out it was feds doing it. I, I mean, it's, it's just crazy. And, and we have evidence already that I don't even want to give attention to because it just adds to the whole thing, uh, you know, from who, who the FBI was there with, who they're running. I mean, we have it all. And it's just so, I mean, on video. And it's just so terrible. And then once people have been told you're talking bad about them, in, in, in this weird fake kinship thing the federal handles handlers will engage in, these are expert psychological warfare people, then even though it's not true that I didn't talk bad about the Bundys, it doesn't matter because now we better not talk to Alex because he doesn't like us. When I like him, I'm here talking to him like a straight man does. You know, just straight to him, straight talk, straight shooting. I'm, I, I just, it's just so sad that the liberty movement is not more sophisticated, Joel. Well, you know, there's no, I I'm completely agree. Uh, anyone who's in a situation like uh, Ammon Bundy and his group has got to realize that when you have an open invitation for everybody to come and join us, you're going to have federal agent provocateurs coming in there. And one of those people is probably going to take a pot shot at law enforcement if they get nearby. And then law enforcement will have an example to start shooting. So it's very important to stand down while this thing is peaceful, while you've got the high ground, Ammon, so that you can continue. And I would say, to state the, the tough um, position they're taking, that in the future, we will come to the defense of any rancher who is being persecuted by the BLM. And, and, but we'll do it in a peaceful manner. We will be armed, but we will come there to keep these kinds of people from being railroaded into prison, as the Hammonds were. I'm, it's unfortunate the Hammonds succumbed to the, the latest threats. They really were put through the ringer in a very phony court uh, situation where there was jury tampering, where there's threats, uh, and the, the poor judge tried to savage his conscience. I know he was under pressure by the feds to throw this terrorism statute. He, he tried to give less than the minimum sentence and then got overturned. Uh, I think he's rolling uh, in his retirement uh, from sadness of what he did, but that's what happens in judges. There's so many controlled judges who are afraid to stand up to the federal government. It's incredible. Uh, Joel Skousen, again, is our guest. Uh, look, looking at the whole backdrop of things, the timing of this, there's been so many demonstrations there the last year with the mine being, sh you know, shut down on the feds, grabbing buffer zones around it, classic UN uh, Agenda 21 tactics used around the world. But the timing of the group of people being led in the demonstration, not knowing what's about to happen, and then suddenly under peer pressure, you're in a federal building, and hey, we're taking it over. Uh, and then you learn it's not the Bundys that were even uh, honchoing it. I mean, come on, people. Uh, this, right before Obama rolls all this out, this gave big victories. And I'm, and I'm not bashing anybody, but I just got to be honest, big victories for optics to make gun owners look like there's this big insurrection happening, and hopefully they want to kick something bigger off. So I think the cause is just good people involved, but... Undoubtedly, there is a seen hand, right in plain view, involved in all this that people need to admit tactically when something isn't the best idea. And I agree. They've had some victories getting the word out. Uh, the BLM's so bad uh, that it's waking a lot of folks up. Uh, so right now is the time to, like you said, put this declaration out, announce they're forming an organization, say they did it to bring attention. Hey, occupy this, occupy that, does it, and don't get called terrorist and then uh, get out of there. Uh, and then the feds will really look like they're persecuting them if they come after them. Uh, but I got to tell you, Joel, we obviously had reporters there at the Bundy Ranch, very good Christian, hardworking people that, that, that do have a conscience and are committed. And, and, I, and as a man, I admire it. 
But at the same time, uh, if there's 10 guys in alleys, you know, with clubs, I'm not going to take them all on, you know, you know, you know, just so I can get somebody's stolen wallet back. I'm going to call the police. It's just not a smart fight. And I know they prayed about it at the Bundy Ranch and decided to go up against the feds and all that. And they were ready to die. That's what they prayed about. Uh, and I know they're having those same prayers right now. But you, they just can't get too much into the psychology of this being Custer's last stand of the Alamo. Uh, because I just strategically at this point, this is not our Alamo event. That would be a disaster if a civil war physically kicks off right now. You could not give a better present, in my view, Joel Skousen, to the globalist. That's right. I think, Alex, that you need to live for a better day, another fight. This is a long-term battle. It's not going to be won by this one occupation. And so take the best deal you can get right now, which is you walk out of there without being arrested. You're free to protest again at a more convenient and better and more justifiable site. And you can continue to the, this fight on into the future. That's my message to Ammon, if you can hear. Well, we've got his number, and then he agrees to do interviews and then does it as if we need to, as if that boosts our ratings to have him on. I mean, it, it doesn't. I can shoot a video right now and have 3 million views. I and mean, we've got millions watching right now, millions listening. And, and it's just to show how these different agents of influence get in there and, and, and cut patriots off from people. It's just you could write us. You could write a script about this. I mean, I remember looking at the transcripts of the Waco stuff and Ruby Ridge and these events and, and, and the way they cut groups off and the way they manipulate. It, you see the scripting. And Joel, shifting gears now, as soon as I saw this headline yesterday morning, as soon as I saw it, I knew what I was going to read. And then I went and read it, and sure enough, it was there because I was expecting this. I knew this was coming. I, <clears throat> I could tell it was the next phase in what they're doing. They've given them thousands of Stinger missiles, other MPAD, surface-to-air missiles out of Benghazi. Saudi Arabia is giving it to ISIS al-Qaeda. I've confirmed that with top officers in the military on and off record. Everybody's seen it and heard it. We're the first to report it here uh, years ago. ISIS developed sophisticated new weaponry capable of shooting down passenger jets. Newly developed technology could allow ISIS to use redundant and decommissioned service-to-air missiles to attack aircraft. And then as, as soon as I saw the top headline, I knew it would be below it because it's just so scripted. And then you read... Oh, it's weapons they got from the U.S. and others. They know how to recharge the batteries now. So, Joel, talk about spinning it. They've developed sophisticated weapons. No, it's Western weapons. So now if they start shooting down airliners and stuff, this is the plausible flimsy deniability uh, that they've developed technology now? I mean, uh, recharging a battery? You know, everything about ISIS and whether it's its initial development to become 50 or 60,000 man terrorist force without anybody knowing it in U.S. intelligence, that's just not believable. They're not developing any of this technology. Uh, we know that the chemical warfare weapons they used to smuggle in in order to implicate the Assad regime came out of Turkey and some of it came out of Saudi Arabia acting as surrogates for the United States. If they're getting old decommissioned missiles, Listen, these things are locked away tighter than a drum in old uh, military bases in the U.S. They have to be transshipped out of there, across the ocean, through Turkey or Saudi Arabia. I mean, who's kidding who that they simply We know Hillary did it through, through, uh, through the State Department. The Pentagon wouldn't. Well, I'm not saying that Hillary would know what's going on in the dark side of government. I mean, she's a, a puppet of the dark side. But, you know, typically Obama or Hillary or even George W. Bush didn't know what the dark side of government was doing. I mean, this is too dangerous to let politicos know about, the, you know, dark side operations. They need plausible deniability, Alex. And, of course, you were an officer in the Marine Corps yourself, but you wouldn't go along with dark side stuff, so I guess they kept you at a certain level? Yeah, you know, unless you become a real abject yes man and you go to the uh, war college and come under uh, the influence of Georgetown University professors who are mostly globalists, uh, you know, there's a, a real screening process, Alex, before you can get into the dark side. And they don't let most military officers, even yes men, really into the dark side stuff. They bring them along to a certain point, they give them plausible excuses uh, to run things, but they don't let them really in. Let's on talk it. about who's actually in the dark side on the other side. Because I had some family that was in the dark side. That's one reason I know so much about this. We'll be right back, Infowars.com. Ladies and gentlemen, We've done an hour and a half of live broadcast. We're going all the way to 3 o'clock today. Anthony Gucciardi has got an earache today, which a lot of people have with a really bad allergy, so he's not hosting the fourth hour. Rob Dew is. A lot coming up on that front. Anthony will host tomorrow. 
But I've done an hour and a half of broadcast and have not plugged one time. Now, every other radio show out there, as you know, and they have to because of the economy, the market, advertising, or they go bankrupt, which a lot of radio is, plug every segment. I skip breaks, even though I shouldn't. I haven't plugged in an hour and a half. So when I do plug, I need people to really listen. We've got amazing nutraceuticals at InfoWarsLife.com that if you'll just try super male vitality or female vitality or X2, nascent iodine, or the Oxy Powder or Brain Force or any of these products, they really are the very best we could get. DNA Force has the Bio CoQ10 and Bio PQQ. I mean, uh, twelve to $14,000 a kilo just for one of the ingredients in it. Comparable formulas that you get from doctors that have the same stuff in it. A lot of this is prescription in Europe, but you still get this in the U.S. from doctors. Like we had to have a doctor be able to even get these products for this, even though it's not prescription. They don't sell it until it, it, unless it's to a medical licensed person. And it's the true organic type. I had to buy it from Mitsubishi America. Comparable products are $300 to $600 for the same type dosage. This is 140 something. The bottle has something like $80 of product in it. Now, now that's our super high end. We got stuff that's $9.95. Whether it's colloidal, silver, whatever it is, we set out to bring you the very best. 15% off DNA Force. Now's the time. Save, I don't know, what is that, 15, 20 bucks or more? Uh, InfoWarsLife.com. Uh, silver Bullet. Um, Methyl Cabalamin Secret 12. Highest quality organic B12 under the tongue. Real game changers. Just try them. Go read the 4.8 star reviews. Many of them five star reviews at, at third party sites, highly respected, that we have linked on the site. Nobody else in nutraceuticals has got 4.8 average because I really did set out. I mean, th these big manufacturing companies, we go to them and, and they say, we've never seen anybody put this much stuff in a product. They'll put like two, three dollars in a bottle of something and sell it for 40 bucks and have it all be marketing. That's not what we do. And that's why all the big snobs in, in uh, you know, the big health sites and the big snobs that are into nutraceuticals love our products because they're like, wow, this is what we've been wanting. Well, it's not even that I'm some wonderful guy. I'm going to sell what I'd want to take. And I'm no Mr. Beach Boy perfect guy. I, I thought they'd kill me years ago, so I didn't care about my body and gained almost 100 pounds. I've lost 60-plus pounds, feel a lot better, exercise a lot more. It's things like good halogen in the body. That's the good iodine. InfoWarsLife.com, 50% off. It ends Friday. We have a new InfoWars calendar in. It's got thousands of dollars of coupons in it at $6.95. InfoWarsLife.com, InfoWarsStore.com, or 888-253-3139. And while you're in the InfoWars store, InfoWarsStore.com, you really should get the last film I made, and that is Strategic Relocation, and get the accompanying big book that uh, you can get with it that Joel Skousen wrote. And of course, he's in the film. The most valuable survival info you're going to find, and even other top survivalists on record, you know, say that Joel Skousen is at the top of his game. You know, top people out there that we've had on, uh, like Wesley Rawls and others. I mean, he is at the top of his game of no nonsense, no no BS. InfoWarsStore.com. Get the book, DVD combo, and his other book, uh, The Safe Home, which is the the, the Bible uh, of, of the secure homes. Uh, now, J Joel, I promised to get to this other news, but but uh, this is so important. Let's get into uh, other geopolitical issues, the economy, uh, Hillary. Just briefly, if, if you can hit some of these uh, points, uh, just briefly about Obama first off. Uh, uh, this is very draconian what he's doing with the guns because it's so open-ended, applying a no-fly list uh, to gun owners when the no-fly list is so unconstitutional. Uh, I mean, I think this really signifies a bold acceleration in what they're doing, and I'm really concerned about a false flag. Let me discuss the Obama executive orders, first of all. It's indicative that the administration realizes that they're on tenuous legal ground, and I think they see that there is impeachment possibilities being prepared. It's notable that the administration said that these were advisory only, that in fact they don't, admitted that they don't have the force of law. So even though the media is not telling us that, that's what the technical language says, advisory only. And so I think you're right, uh, Obama's, uh, even though he's got a very deadly agenda, including gun control, the, the phony climate change, and uh, 
uh, other things going forward in this uh, and, and illegal immigration, the amnesty to continue to end, those are the three big agendas. Uh, and refugees, which as I covered in the world of Red Breach, they're flying in on UPS empty planes from Europe into secret locations so that no press is invited, so that it gets to flood the country and only claim that there's 10,000 when there'll be much more. He's engaged in sedition, opening the borders, having the Border Patrol complete the smuggling process, planes coming in from Mexico, clearing customs without being checked. This is, isn't that impeachable? I mean, these are his directives, and now they're going to have, the, you know, the Nick system with these secret directives and these advisories uh, carrying out this illegal agenda. This is government by stealth, is it not, sir? It absolutely is, and it's illegal, it's unconstitutional. The basic problem that I see with the impeachment process is that the Republicans sabotaged the Clinton impeachment. David Skippers, the Democratic prosecutor of impeachment of Ron said it was the Republican leadership which forced my hand. It was the Republican leadership that refused to back We him. had him on at the time. David Shippers exposed the whole thing. That's right. And I think with the uh, Boehner uh, mantle over the speakership of the House uh, and uh, and John or and Paul Ryan following in his footsteps, this omnibus bill was a sellout of the first order. I'm not sure that we can depend on the so-called conservative majorities in Congress to follow through, even if we've got an airtight case. That's my my fear, Alex. Well, you're absolutely right. That's why I said this morning, uh, if Paul Ryan doesn't at least say he's going to start an investigation and impeachment, if they don't have hearings about the executive power grab or start passing laws, ordering these agencies not to follow it and, 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 and stripping money if they do, then the, I watched what they did in California the last two years and in Massachusetts and in Connecticut and in New York State a stealth war where you buy a thousand rounds of 22 ammo, the feds come, take your gun, say we're doing a psychological. Doctors ask, does dad have a gun? Have you seen it? Oh my gosh, call the CPS, there's a gun out. Uh, this is just going to be a soft secret behind the scenes probing uh, to harass gun owners and the gun culture and set the precedent for more of this stealth law garbage. It's just unprecedented. It is, Alex, and uh, once again, I think this is indicative of what I have projected for many years, that even though uh, I am the first one to admit the government is creating excess prison capacity to lock away dissidents someday, they are preparing for martial law, they are preparing to take down dissidents. That's what NSA spying is all about. It's not about terrorism, which is generally a government-created organization, especially at the highest levels. Uh, these NSA lists are to track people who are terrorists, and that's why they put out phony um, uh, disinformation like the DHS buying 2 billion rounds of ammunition. Yeah, they put out an order for that, but they never bought it. The point is, I believe that they put that out so that they could track through the Internet everyone who got upset about it, who passed that information on to others, and they got on lists. So we have to be very careful about the hype that we get attached to uh, and, and pass on in internets because we're being tracked sure. according to that. Isn't the answer to this though, choose what you're strategically gonna do, whether you're gonna be under the radar or whether you're gonna be politically active. And if you decide to be a warrior in the info war, John Hancock it, put your name across the big you know, uh, declaration, want to be on the list, don't be scared of the chilling effect because if they succeed in the chilling effect, uh, then they're gonna really be able to succeed. I don't see them succeeding because you know, we talked about dark side. I want to spend a few minutes on that. People doing a lot of dark side stuff believe they're doing it for right reasons. When they have problems of conscience, uh, they basically either just disappear to the countryside or they get killed or they get shut up and imprisoned. And, and, and that's what goes on. But now we've had such a debate exposing dark side operations. They're so admitted that I'm telling you, I talk to a lot of famous special forces people and people that are high level in person and it, I mean I don't run into special forces people that aren't listeners now and aren't awake and don't know what's going on I mean they're super awake I'm running into more and more feds uh, who go look man we don't want to totally destroy the country we get your right this is scary the Secret Service is just flipping out uh, about the stuff Obama's doing um, and that's why they're bringing up these scandals to control them obviously but they're probably bringing them the hookers to do it but I mean as you know you've talked about that it's just they've got a problem in that they're so decompartmentalized. They wanted to just run al-Qaeda in Syria and everybody go along with it. Well, that's not happened. I mean, so can you speak to dark side and, you know, who you think some of the top controllers? I mean, is it still Kissinger? We know Soros is highly involved. 
uh, they, they have these Bilderberg type confabs with the kingpins where they fine tune the agenda. I mean, we know how it works, but uh, there's a very small percent that are actual, as you know, Luciferians to believe they're carrying out this great work for a greater good. Most of the people are just mercenaries. Yeah, there's actually a few other categories that I would include, Alex. Um, as I pointed out in strategic relocation, when I talked about the government threat. There are at least three levels of uh, conspirators in this globalist conspiracy. There are the very top level, and, and as I've explained on your show before, I do think is satanic base. There's only one way to explain the, the generational effect that we're talking about. That is, for centuries, this has been going on. No single evil man could put such a thing in operation and expect his underlings to carry it forth flawlessly. Nobody, for example, would bring war upon themselves, destroying their own uh, wealthy infrastructure unless they had satanic promises that I'll bless you on the other side, you know, if you help me build my kingdom. But, you know, you can't spread a conspiracy like that very far before it gets people turned off and afraid. So I think only the top 25 or 30, perhaps, know uh, about the full war agenda and bringing a third world war upon this nation in order to drive people into global. Sure. Who is at the top from your research? Obviously, the literal Transylvanian royal family, the uh, Rothschilds are at the top, uh, the Rockefellers are at the top. There's a lot of old families. I mean, really, it is those classic names for my research that are at the top. I'll frankly admit, I don't know, and I don't think anybody does know, because it's the best kept secret in the world. Now, we do know about those people who are public, and I personally agree with you. I think Rockefeller was at the top. I think he's too old and senile now to be much. I agree. Uh, who has it been handed to? Because I know they're trying a transference. They tried it to Senator Rockefeller. He's not been doing good. My top pick is Zbigniew Brzezinski. Um, as the heir apparent, he's got an evil aura about him. He does. They worship him when he goes to these CFR events. They look at him with awe. That tells you. Yeah, yeah it does tell you an awful lot. Kissinger is, uh, has been the kingpin of the public face of globalism for so many years, and he's still around. I mean, we have the admission from um, uh, Jim Jones, the national security uh, advisor under Obama, that in his 19, uh, 2009 uh, Munich He says, security I take orders on the CFR website from his, Henry Kissinger every day. We get daily marching orders of the National Security Council from Henry Kissinger and Associates, passed down through Brent Scowcroft and Sandy Berger. So those people have to be top-level conspirators. I think the foreign policy advisors of every puppet president uh, are the NSA advisor. Um, and uh, there's a domestic advisor, too, right now, Valerie Jarrett. Uh, she's a pretty evil woman, I believe, and advises him in that uh, the socialist agenda there. But, you know, there are dozens and thousands, perhaps, people, especially when they run up against a major conspiracy like the 9-11, which was a government operation from beginning to end. I can tell you that every one of the people on the 9-11 Commission know that there's a control system, know that it was a government operation, and know that they've been silenced. You, you're so, right, sir. Six of them went public and said it's all a lie, it's a cover-up, bare minimum, stand down. I've talked to members of Congress that literally on the phone start crying. You hear them go, excuse me, when they start talking about it, and on air, you hear them choking up when they've read the 28 pages and more, and that's just proving they stood down. I mean, it's exactly, even high-level commissioners who the system thought they could trust freaked out and tried to go public. Uh, Panetta, uh, the transportation secretary, went public five times and said, no, Cheney was there. Cheney ordered a stand down. So, again, it, exactly, it shows how many good people there are. So how can then such a small group continue to carry their evil out? Well, it comes from the threat of force, ultimately. They do kill enough people. Look at the 50 to 80 people who died surrounding Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton didn't order those deaths. But I'll tell you, the, the protection team of globalists that ran Bill Clinton as a puppet, they know how to protect their people. They know how to silence people who are getting, you know, uh, feet. You know, there was the transportation secretary that was killed in the plane crash in, uh, in Bosnia that had a bullet in his head, and that had to be covered up. Look at all the people that got educated yeah, the of, uh, uh, of the JFK assassination. So there are literally thousands of people who are saying yes to the establishment, who know there's a control system and fear for their lives, or there are the predictable yes men, like in the media. I don't think, even though all of the left wing and, and pro-government media follows the government dictate, I don't think for a minute that all those liberal reporters 
are knowing conspirators, but I do think they're intimidated by knowing that they're going to lose their jobs. In fact, they got hired because they were predictable liberals. They don't have to be instructed on everything. They will generally do what's... Uh, uh, I agree. Let me throw you uh, uh, this piece of intel. A couple days ago, as you know, the 58-year-old healthy Russian intelligence chief who's been leading operations in Syria and Ukraine uh, magically dies. They're not saying how. Well, both the U.S. and the KGB or the follow-on um, you know, services there have a, a very sophisticated array of ways of killing people, uh, either through injection, through aer aerosols. Sure, and if the West did kill him, that is quite a shot across the bow. It is, uh, but remember, Russia, uh, Putin is showing surprising restraint.